Hi, everybody. Welcome to Stop Being Sold, a community of informed consumers who are sick and tired of being sold financial products they don't understand or need. So if you're tired of being a transaction, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and also the notification bell so you never miss another video from us. And while you're at it, we'd appreciate that thumbs up sign. So it helps us grow the channel and also gives us the feedback that you like the content we're producing. How are you today, Brian? Hey, Michelle, I'm doing great. How about yourself? Doing good. Thank you. So today we're going to be talking about something really important, uh, costly roll of 401k rollover mistakes. And as you know, in the news for the past, right, for the past months, um, and it, it just hasn't stopped. It's not stopping. Is this this great resignation. And just yesterday, um, the Washington Post on February 1st, the Washington Post, 4.3 million Americans left their jobs in December 2021. So it's not stopping. <laughs> and it's an important topic for us to discuss today because there are a lot of people who have resigned who've left behind old 401ks with their previous employers. And then what do we know from just the past few decades is that people often just leave them behind. They go from, from employer to employer and they think that, oh, I can leave it there. My past employer is taking care of it for me. And that's just not the case. And it can be extremely costly to leave a 401k behind. Yes, yes, it can. And, you know, the, this great resignation, Michelle, we've never seen nothing like this. Right. And, um, you know, whether you're starting a business or uh, going to a better job because people are upgrading their positions now um, at a greater rate than we've ever seen before. Um, but like you said, a lot leave that old 401k behind. It's okay, but today's video, we're going to cover talking about the rollover mistakes that we see all the time out there. So, sure. so real quick, if you have a 401k that you've left behind, if your spouse, your partner, whomever, even a friend, <laughs> people do talk about this sometimes, yes, they do. Um, you know, watch this video to the end. It's really important. And so Brian, I'm going to toss it over to you. We're going to talk about three costly rollover mistakes for 2020. So what is the first one? Okay, this is the big one it, to me, because this is a mistake that I see all the time. Mm -hmm. Rolling over your 401k funds indirectly versus directly. And that's a huge mistake. So let's go into first what a direct rollover is. Okay. This is the simplest. Okay, so you got your 401k over here at ABC Company. And you've got an IRA opened over here, CDF brokerage account, right? Whatever it may be. Right. So when you do a direct rollover, Michelle, you basically fill out the paperwork with your new IRA company to roll the funds directly from your 401k into the new account. You're out of the picture except for signing some documents, uh, whether right. it's online. It's going from or one, one company or custodian to another yeah, from all custodian to custodian, to custodian, that's direct. You get rid of all the mistakes that way, okay, compared to indirectly. Indirectly is basically you say, you know what, I can do this myself. I've got a 60-day window of free money that I can borrow and then mm -hmm. put it back. That's what an indirect rollover is. If you call your old 401k company and say, look, I'm going to roll it over, but go ahead and send me the check. And then I've got 60 days to put it into my IRA account. Problem with that, Michelle, is it comes with stipulations and penalties. Okay. First off, your old 401k company, by law, has will automatically withhold 20%. So think of that $100,000 sitting in the account. Mm -hmm. They're going to hold $20,000 for income taxes. Then they're going to send you a check for $80,000. Now you have to deposit that 80,000 into the, your new IRA within 60 days. Otherwise you got penalties right. and the penalties, it's just not penalties that you have to worry about, Michelle. You have to deposit the money into the new IRA, not only the 80,000, but the 20,000 that they withheld, or exactly. then you're gonna get penalized on that additional 20,000. Most consumers don't have that additional 20% just laying around. And yes, you'll get it back at refund tax time, you know, right. the following year. But most people don't have that money sitting in the bank. 
So they never continue through with that process. So real so. quick, Brian. So if you deposit the money into it, if you take your old 401k, deposit it into the new IRA within that 60 day grace period, you still have to come up with that additional 20% that was withheld for taxes. Yeah, because you no longer have that money as IRA money because it was withheld. So got now it. you've got to deposit that money into your IRA and most people don't have that and they forget about that. Well, the, don't IRS give me that money back right away? No, they don't. No. You got to wait no. till next tax season. So, okay. so let's then, talk about the penalties that are, in, that, that are incurred. Yeah, that's what I was going to say next. Um, uh, now, in most cases, if you're um, 59 and a half and under, you're going to own a 10% early withdrawal penalty if you keep the funds longer than that 60 days. Anything that you withhold under 59 and a half, you're now going to get hit with that penalty. Unless there's a little stipulation in there that allows you, if you're between the age of 55 and 59 and a half, it's called the 55 and separate from service rule. Mm -hmm. Now you will be able to bypass that during that time frame, but here's the scenario. You still have to be careful on this. You have to know these rules. And this is why it's a very important to work with a fiduciary that understands the direct and indirect rollover process. So a fiduciary advisor. Okay. Right. All right. So what else do, do people need to understand about the indirect rollover? Okay. Um, back in, I believe it was um, the mid 2000s, like to 2014, 15, IRS came up with a rule that you're only allowed one indirect rollover in a 12 month period. Okay. So if you decide that you're going to pull half your funds out today, and then six months later, pull out the other half funds from these old 401ks, uh, guess what? IRS only allows one of them. So now the one, yeah. the second one is going to be fully taxed and fully penalized and, because you're well, fully taxed is, is ordinary income then? Yes. Ooh. As normal, ordinary income. So, Ouch. Yeah. <laughs> fully taxable. Okay. All right. So one other question I have about indirects is can you split? Can you, can you say, okay, I'm going to open up a Roth IRA and an IRA and can you split it up? Uh, your old 401k, can you send it into multiple accounts or is it only one? You can do it into one unless you brought up a good point. Unless your 401k has a Roth provision in it okay. where some of your funds are traditional and the other are Roth. That allows you to go into two accounts. That's the only one. Got it. Okay. All right. So if you have a provision in your uh, 401k, the Roth provision, it can go into a Roth and then the rest, the traditional 401k can go into traditional, but you got it. otherwise it's, it's what from one account to another. Right. The transfer must. Okay. All right. So let's talk about costly 401k rollover mistake number two. Okay. Uh, rolling your 401k too soon. And um, we kind of briefly touched on this. Mm -hmm. So if you plan to retire before age 59 and a half, taking out the money out of an IRA results in regular income tax on all withdrawals right. and, and an additional 10% IRS early withdrawal penalty, right? Okay. Well, that's, that's just common knowledge. But if you leave your money inside your old 401k plan, you can take advantage of a little known rule called the over 55 rule or the separated from service after okay. 55, okay? This rule basically states that if you're 55 and over in the calendar year that you leave your job, you can take penalty-free withdrawals from that employer's 401k plan. You'll still have to pay taxes on the withdrawals, but you avoid uh -huh. that 10% penalty. Okay. And here's where this comes into play, Michelle, with working with a fiduciary advisor. Mm -hmm. Most fiduciary advisors know this rule. So if, um, okay, here's a scenario. Let's say you decide you want to retire early mm -hmm. and you're wishy-washy about, you know, do I want to go back to work, whatever. And you're past the age of 50, you're 56 years old. You walk away, you resign for that company. Mm -hmm. No rush to move over that 401k because the minute you roll that 401k to an IRA, Guess what? All that money in that 401k is now under IRA guidelines. And now you can't touch it till age 59 and a half. 
Well, right. there's that three and a half year window. What if you have an emergency fund? What, you know, what if you don't have an emergency fund? What if you need access to your funds? Well, now you're going to pay that 10% early withdrawal penalty because now it's an IRA dollars. So we had a client, um, you know, come to us years ago and all their money was IRA money and it was in their old 401k. So we said, look, are you sure you're going to go back to work? And are you not? You're going to stay retired? So they right. had to make a decision. My, as a fiduciary, I recommended they leave half of their money in their old 401k. And we managed it for them during that transition period until they finally got past the age of 59 and a half. They didn't have to worry about that and uh, the extra IRS penalties. So got it. So really what it boils down to is, you know, working with a fiduciary advisor who has to legally and ethically have your best interest, you know, take your best, have your best interest at heart, right? Right. Has to. We'll By be law. able to say, Hey, I don't know that this is, I don't think this is a good idea to roll this over right now, or maybe it is, or what the example you just gave. Right. So it's not just, I want to roll over my IRA and an advisor says, okay, let, I mean, roll over my old 401k and advisor says, okay, this is what we're doing. You need right. someone who really can look at the bigger picture and understand your specific goals and where you are. And right. Understand- and on that scenario right there, Michelle, we've had consumers come to us in, in a bind, needing right. access to their funds. And they were, they were inside that rule period. They were after age 59, 55, but younger than 59 and a half, mm-hmm. already started their new job, but they needed access to some funds. Well, guess what? Their old, you know, if they would have just left a little bit there for an emergency fund, we could have right. withdrew from that. But they had to learn, take money from their IRA early and pay that an additional 10% penalty. So it's pretty okay. substantial. All right. Perfect. Well, we're going to put a video um, link in below on why it's critical to your financial future um, to work with a fiduciary advisor. So that link will be below, below this video and encourage you after this video is done to go check that out. Definitely. All right. So let's move on to the costly roll, 401k rollover mistake number three. Yeah, this one's, um, I, you won't see this in a lot of 401ks, but it is out there. Um, rolling over your company stock. Okay. Mm-hmm. You've got to be careful on this because if you if your 401k contains shares of your former employer stock that's appreciated in value has grown over the years, mm-hmm. um, you got to be careful and making sure you do this the right way. Um, in, in in fact, Michelle, in some cases, rolling over the stock into an IRA could be a costly mistake. Okay, got it. 401k plan distributions are subject to ordinary income taxes. Right, mm-hmm. that's just normal. However, there's a special rule that applies when you receive a tax distribution of employer stock from your plan. This rule is called net unrealized appreciation or the NUA rule. Now, you would only have to pay ordinary income tax on the cost basis of that stock, not on the whole amount. Uh-huh. Yeah, so then the cost basis, for those who don't know what a cost basis is, the cost basis is the stock price at the time that it was purchased for you yes. by the plan. Any appreciation in the stock will receive more favorable long-term capital gains treatment versus ordinary income taxes. Okay. And uh, the NUA rule does not apply if you roll over the stock to an IRA. You lose that benefit. And I've seen this mistake too many yeah. times of advisors that do not understand that Look, a rollover is not just a paycheck to you as an advisor. A rollover is doing what's right for your consumer. Find the best plan for them. Understand what's inside their plan before you roll it over. Okay, awesome. Is there any other, anything else you want to say about rolling over 401k? Um, No, just be careful on it. Um, Take a look at our uh, guide uh, below uh, as far as working with the fiduciary and uh, stay tuned for the channel for uh, more updates because uh, 401k rollers are very prominent right now because of the great resignation. And we do not see that great resignation slowing down anytime soon. So Right. Absolutely. All right. If you like the content of this video, please hit that like button. We'd appreciate it. It helps us grow the channel and lets us know that you enjoy this content. 
if you have questions, uh, if you have questions about rolling over 401k or 401ks in general, pop them in the pop them in the comment section below and we will do our best to answer them as they come in. Definitely. And that's pretty much it. Thank you, Brian. And thank you, everybody who's watched till the end here. Thanks, Michelle. Thanks, everyone. Have a great day.